the topic of today is orthodontic study models so the first question which arises is that what are they so orthodontic study models they are essential diagnostic records which help to study the occlusion and dentition from all the three dimensions so we need the study models because we cannot have our patient with us for all the time we cannot have our patient so we need the study models so that we can do the treatment planning we can do various analysis and so on so these study models they have certain ideal requirements first of all they should be accurate means they should be accurate enough to reproduce the exact replica of the teeth and the surrounding structures second they should be symmetrical means that they should be pleasing to the eye symmetrical means they should have equal dimensions from all the side and pleasing to the eye and they should be trimmed in such a way that they replicate the measurement and the angles these measurements and angle will be studying uh, under the trimming of the cast and uh, they should be trimmed so that they have a clean smooth bubble free surface and they should also have a glossy mark proof finish so why do we make study models so we uh, have to make study models because we have to do treatment planning for visualizing for patient motivation patient motivation because we can do certain changes in the study model and can show the patient what his dentition will look in the near future for medical legal consideration uh, because this uh, study model is a permanent record of the intermaxillary relationship and the occlusion at the start of therapy so we can have them for medical legal consideration if the patient takes you to court and uh, for comparison it is used for comparison for the past study models and the present study models how the treatment has progressed and how is the success of the treatment or how is the outcome of the treatment and it also serves as a reminder and also it is used as a record when the patient wants to consult some other dentist or clinician so parts of a study model study model has two parts one is the anatomic part and other is the artistic part the anatomic part is that portion which we replicate from the patient's mouth and we have to make sure that there are no changes in these anatomic portion this is the actual impression of the dental arch and the artistic portion is the base and the extra sides which provides aesthetic appearance now study model fabrication and trimming uh, this we'll be studying in this video and in the next video we'll be moving on to the model analysis so uh, steps in art portion fabrication so first of all we have to fabricate the art portion uh, first of all we'll make the base the back portion of the uh, study model and then we'll progress on various angulations and how to trim the cast so lower cast first of all we have to determine the occlusal plane so what we do we have to determine the occlusal plane this is done by considering the highest three points in the arch so if this is the point this is the point we join them together and we get a plane that is the occlusal plane so we have to trim the base of the lower model parallel to the occlusal plane so this is the base of the model we have to trim it such a way that this is parallel to the occlusal plane and then we have to trim the back portion we have to trim the back portion perpendicular to the base this should be 90 degrees now midline of the lower model so i'll show you in the diagram here the midline of the lower model should correspond to the midline which is the mid palatine raphae of the upper model and what about the upper cast the what we do is that we occlude the models using the wax bite so uh, we'll use the wax bite to occlude them so why do we use the wax bite so the wax bite not only maintains the correct inter occlusal relationship but also prevents the fracturing of the tooth so what it does it prevents tooth fracturing tooth fracturing and also plus it gives the correct interrelationship correct inter 
relationship so we have to trim such that the upper model matches the lower model so after we have occluded we have occluded these two using the wax bite and then we have to trim the upper model so that it looks like the lower model and then uh, yeah make sure that you have to preserve the hamler notch so uh, we have to preserve the hamler notch because the hamler notch of the upper model governs the distance so we have to trim the base of the upper model so that it is parallel to the lower model so we have to trim it such a way that it is parallel to the lower model and then uh, we have to keep several millimeters of extra height so why do we have to keep so we have to make sure that there is certain height which is left after trimming so we do so because when we position them together this occlusal plane should be kind of centered means the distance between the base and the occlusal plane and from here to the base of the lower should be such that it comes in center now let's trim each model independently so after we have trimmed the base now we'll trim each model independently for the lower model we have to make the buckle cut the curve cut and the heel cut so uh, the buckle cut we have to make the buckle cuts on the edge of the vestibule at 60 degree angle to the back so i'll zoom in here so here you can see that this is the back and this uh, portion that is distal to the canine uh, or the premolar wh whichever is more prominent so we'll uh, join these two and we'll get an angle that should be 60 degree and that is called the buckle cut usually this distance is around 5 to 6 mm away from the most prominent point of the lower canine or the first bicuspid whatever is more prominent so after this we will have a look at the curve cut so for the curve cut what we do we curve we make the cut in a curve fashion for the anterior teeth and we have to make sure that the finished model should be 5 to 6 mm of the anterior teeth then we come to the heel cut so what we do in the heel cut i'll zoom in here so in the heel cut what we do the heel of the lower model is cut at approximately 115 degrees to the back of the model and the floor of the mouth should be elevated and smoothened to form a flat surface okay so that should be 115 degree and that is the heel cut and after this we come to the upper model so in the upper model we'll do the buckle cut the anterior cut and the heel cut so in the lower model we were doing the buckle cut the curve cut and the heel cut here the curve cut is replaced by the anterior cut so in the buckle cut we do the same thing that should be 60 degrees and what we do in the anterior cut we take a point at the midline and a point near the canine region and we make a cut this way and a cut that way so this does not follow a curve and the heel cut what we do in the heel cut we occlude both the upper and the lower models and we have to finish them such a way that they are flush with the heels of the lower model at 115 degrees now we come to the finishing of the model okay so finishing of the model is done by carborandum stone technique so in the carborandum stone technique what we do is that the model is rubbed over a stone with even pressure under stream of water stream of water and this is done until smooth surface results smooth surface results 
okay now the method is to rub the model on a frosted glass surface so after the surface have been finished and uh, we get the dimensions we need we let it we let it dry for 48 hours okay F after the finishing we'll provide the glazing now so glazing it is provided by commercial gloss so what we do is that we uh, the models are allowed allowed to remain in the solution for about one by two hours that is 30 minutes and uh, we have to hold each of the arch under water and the models are then polished so remove soap by cotton so how we'll remove we'll give rapid motion using cotton rapid motion so cast trimming can also be done to indicate the occlusal plane relationships so this is known as the gnatha static technique so gnatha static technique was introduced by simon in 1962 so what it does it reproduces the inclination of the occlusal plane with the, the frankfurt horizontal plane so frankfurt horizontal plane goes from that is also known as the eye ear plane from the eye to the ear and so the cast will show approximate inclination as the frankfurt horizontal plane and this can be more accurately done with a cephalogram so our next topic is the model analysis which we'll be studying in the next video thanks for watching